Hey, I'm Dan Perry, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to build a professional looking custom closet like you see behind me here using basic tools and low cost materials. Here's a quick overview of the project. First, you'll buy some 3 quarter inch MDF, cut it down into shelves, paint those shelves, and then nail them to the wall. Simple, yet effective. Now here's what I'm going to cover in this video. First, I'll teach you how to build the closet step by step so you know exactly what you're in for. Then at the end of the video, I'll share some tips for planning and designing the closet. Let's jump right in. The first step is to get a sheet of 3 quarter inch MDF. MDF comes in 4 by 8 sheets and costs between $30 or $40 per sheet. Then cut that MDF into shelves. So MDF is one of the easiest materials to cut. Now ideally you'll have a table saw, but you can also just use a circular saw as you see me using right here. To make straight cuts, use a straight piece of wood as a guide and clamp it to the table. Now the width of the shelves can be as wide as you'd like. For this project, I'm doing 12 inch wide shelves. Now you'll also want to cut strips of MDF to use as shelf supports. That way you don't have to use shelf brackets. This is cheaper, easier, and better because shelf brackets often get in the way. So cut the shelf supports to at least two inches wide, but you can certainly go wider if you plan to mount something to them like you see here. You can then use a miter saw to cut the shelf supports to length. And here's a tip. I recommend creating a cut list that specifies the dimensions of each piece before you start cutting. It'll save you loads of time, and I'll talk about this more at the end of the video. If your shelves are longer than three feet long, consider cutting out triangular pieces of MDF to use as supports, or just purchase some shelf brackets. Really up to you. And once you're done cutting, sand any corners you want to be softened with some 180 or 220 grit sandpaper. Then dust them off and get ready to paint. The fastest way to paint these shelves is to install them first and then use a paint sprayer to paint them. But this video is all about how to do this using basic tools, so we're just going to use a paint roller and paint them before installing them. The benefit of doing it this way is that there will be less fumes inside your home. So set up all your pieces, make sure they are clean, and then paint one side at a time. Once that side dries, flip it over and paint the other side. To get the best finish, apply one coat of oil-based primer and then two coats of paint. Two coats is always better than one, but it's really up to you to decide if you really want to do that second coat of paint or not. For a closet, I usually don't think it's necessary. Now one thing to note here, it's important to use an oil-based primer. If you use a water-based primer, you'll have to sand the shelves before painting because the water in the primer will cause the wood fibers in the MDF to raise up and make the surface rough. This isn't a big deal, but for a smoother surface, use an oil-based primer. Now for this project, I actually used a water-based primer because I don't like to use oil-based paint products. Then I just sanded the tops of the shelves before painting, since that was the only part I wanted to be smooth and everything turned out great. So it's really up to your preference if you want to use an oil-based primer or a water-based primer. Here you can see all of the shelves and the shelf supports after they've been painted and they are ready to install. While the paint is drying on the shelves, now is a good time to prep the closet for installation. For this project, I had to remove the old shelves, patch a lot of holes, and apply a fresh coat of paint to the walls before installing the shelves. Here I just decided to use the same color paint that I used on the shelves. Again, this probably would have been a lot faster if I would have just installed the shelves and then painted with a paint sprayer all at once. But this is the way I did it, and you can't win them all. Now it's time for the fun part, installing the shelves. First, use a level to draw lines on the wall where you want the shelves to sit. Then 
Then use a stud finder to locate and mark the studs so you know where to nail the shelf supports. Use a level to drive vertical line down the wall to mark the center of each stud. Next, use a brad nailer to nail the shelf supports to the wall using the lines you drew earlier as guides. I'm using two inch nails here and that's what I would recommend for your project as well. Now, if you don't have a brad nailer, you can use screws instead. Just use one two inch long screw per stud location. Careful planning and taking accurate measurements before cutting the shelves makes this part much faster and easier. But no matter how well you measure, anticipate having to make a few cuts during installation. With my closet design, I'm using a few vertical boards for support and to separate sections of the closet. Since I don't want those resting directly on the carpet, you can see me cutting the carpet and the baseboards to get it to fit here. And then just work your way from one side of the closet to another until you have everything installed. I did this project over a period of five days while working just a couple of hours per day. Now, if I were to work full days and do this process efficiently, I could have finished this in about two days. Now for this project, expect the planning stage to be the most time consuming, especially if you have a walk-in closet like this. As always, projects like this are far more enjoyable if you don't rush the process and instead try making an art out of it. As you can see, using this pneumatic brad nailer really speeds up the process. I'm using it to nail three nails per stud location. But again, you can also just use a drill and some screws, it's just going to take longer. The same closet system can be used for pretty much any closet design, whether it's a pantry in your kitchen or a kid's room closet like this one. Once you have all the shelves installed, make sure to tack them in place with a few nails. Now, you can call it done here if you'd like, but if you want it to look just a little bit better, you can go back and caulk all of the edges and then paint over the caulking and any nails or screws. Again, that's not necessary, but it definitely gives that finished look. And the final step is to hang up the clothes rods, which you can buy from any local home store and then cut them to length. Now, as you can see, this makes a big difference to the closet. It not only looks better, it allows you to store a lot more stuff without cluttering your closet. This is one of those simple improvements that can really make a difference in your day-to-day -day life. Okay, now that you know what to expect, let's talk about how to plan and design your closet because that is a very important step. So first, you're gonna carefully measure the width and height of each wall in your closet and write down those measurements. Take note of any irregular features that you'll need to consider with your design and take a few minutes to just sit in your closet and really think through where you want everything to be. Then draw a diagram of the closet on a piece of paper and use that diagram to sketch out your design so you can figure out where you want everything to be and you probably wanna create multiple to kind of play with it. So this process can be a bit overwhelming. So here are some tips. So first, figure out how much rack space you need to accommodate for hanging your clothes. So how long do you need your total rack space to be? Then identify any larger objects that you're gonna need to store in your closet, like a laundry basket or a shoe rack. Then with whatever space you have left, add as much shelving as possible. In this closet, I did 12 inch deep shelves that are spaced vertically by 12 inches, which was just right. The curtain rods are spaced as shown here, 44 inches off the ground and then 36 inches apart. 
Now, once you have your diagram shown and it's kind of planned out, create a cut list so you know exactly how large to cut each piece. Be very careful here and think through everything carefully as it will save you a lot of time. Now for more dimensions to consider when planning your closet and pictures of other closets, head over to DIYWithDan.com forward slash closet. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And one last thing, if you enjoy DIY projects and you'd like to learn how to turn your DIY skills into a profitable handyman business that generates over six figures in income per year, then head over to handymanstartup.com. You'll find loads of free information on how to turn your skills into a profitable local service business. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.